Today we're going to look at a really interesting problem involving a quadratic equation and its roots. In particular, we're going to discover what the probability, the roots of this quadratic equation x squared plus bx plus c equals zero are real. And notice this can really be seen as a general quadratic equation given that if we had an a in front of x squared, we could just divide by that a and turn it equal to one. Well, of course, that is unless a is equal to zero, but then we don't really have a quadratic equation, we have a linear equation. Okay, so what's the idea behind our process here? Well, we're gonna fix a number m, it's a real number that's bigger than or equal to zero, and then we're gonna let x naught be a root of our equation up here. And then we're gonna calculate the following probability. And that is the probability that x naught is real given that the absolute value of x naught is less than or equal to m. I should really say the modulus of x naught because if it's complex, we'll need the modulus, not the absolute value. And then finally, we'll take the limit as m approaches infinity. Notice that this number right here, this conditional probability number could depend on m. That's why we need to take that limit in the end. Okay, so let's get started. Well, first of all, we can notice that by the quadratic equation, we know that x naught will be of the form negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4c all over two. And also, we know that this is real if and only if b squared minus 4c is bigger than or equal to zero, if the discriminant is bigger than or equal to zero. But now let's observe that that is equivalent to having c less than or equal to, let's see, b squared over four. So, well, that's gonna be an important little inequality or equation that we'll work with, but we're gonna set that aside for just a second. Okay. So next up, what we want to do is find, really, it's going to be a curve in the BC plane that have the roots of this quadratic equation, well, the modulus of the roots of this quadratic equation exactly equal to m. Okay, so let's do that. So let's observe that if x naught is not a real number, that means that we can express x naught as negative b plus or minus i times the square root of 4c minus b squared all over two. So of course, if x is not a real number, then that means that discriminant is negative, but that means that we can maybe factor a minus one out of that discriminant, take the square root, which becomes i, and then we'll flip the order of subtraction, giving us this object right here. So let's see. all over four. And that's simply by maybe some standard complex arithmetic. But in the end, we'll see that this is equal to C. Okay, but now let's observe that if we are in the region where our modulus of X naught is its maximum value, which is this M right here, then we have the following. So we have C is equal to M squared. Okay, nice. Now let's, what's, let's look at what's happening when X naught is real. So if X naught is real, then that means the following. And that is that the absolute value of X naught is equal to M if and only if plus minus x naught is equal to m, or maybe I should write this as x naught is equal to plus minus m. But now we can express x naught using this quadratic equation. So that means that negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four times c is equal to plus minus two m. 
So I went ahead and I multiplied that two over. I think that's not really an issue. But now we can add the b to both sides and we'll see that this is equivalent to having plus minus square root of b squared minus 4c is equal to b plus minus 2m. And now we can square both sides of this and we'll end up with b squared minus 4c is equal to b squared plus minus, let's see, that's gonna be four times little b times m, and then plus four times m squared. But now let's observe in the end, we can see this b squared kind of obviously cancels, and we're left with c is equal to plus minus m times b, and then minus, let's see, that's gonna be m squared. And so that's again like after dividing by four. Actually, I guess we're dividing by negative four here. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We have if our b and c are chosen so that c is equal to m squared, or c is equal to plus minus m times b minus m squared, then we achieve a root with a modulus of m. But let's observe that we can view each of these as curves inside of the b, c plane. Okay, so let's get a picture of that going. So thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and hit the thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, think about subscribing, it really helps us out. Okay, so let's see what we've got so far. So if the modulus of x naught is m, and x naught is not r, then we have c is equal to m squared. And so that c being equal to m squared puts us on this horizontal line segment in, let's see, this is gonna be the b, c plane. And then if x naught was real, then we saw that c lied on one of those two lines plus minus m times b minus m squared. So one of the lines is right here, so it joins minus m squared along the y-axis up to this point 2m m squared. And then let's see, it uh, along the other path joins that same point minus m squared up to, let's see, that's gonna be minus 2m m squared. Now we've got another thing that is like maybe pretty obvious, and that is that we have a single real solution if and only if c is equal to b squared over four. That's the discriminant of this quadratic equation. So let's see, that c equals b squared over four is actually a nice parabola that lives inside of this triangle. Okay, so there we have our solution space broken down into this nice picture. So notice that down here, so between the parabola and the set of blue lines, well, let's notice in this space, we have real solutions. And I guess I should point out there, they are two real solutions. And then up here above the parabola, but below this yellow line, we have complex conjugate solutions. So let's see, we've got complex conjugate solutions there. And there are two solutions in that case as well. And then along that boundary, we'll have a single real solution like we talked about before. And now we're ready to do our final calculation. So we're gonna do it as follows. Let's notice that the probability that x naught is not real, given that the modulus of x naught is less than or equal to m, is going to be the quotient of these two areas. So it's gonna be the area of this green region, because that's in the complex part, uh, divided by the area of the entire triangle. So I'll maybe just draw the triangle like this. Notice it's got two blue parts and one yellow part. Okay, nice. But now each of those parts are fairly straightforward to calculate. Let's observe that the area of the green part, since it is symmetric around the y-axis, we can write it as two times 
the integral from zero to two m of this top curve, which is the line m squared minus the bottom curve, which is this parabola b squared over four, and this is gonna be with respect to b. And then the area of that triangle can be got just by one half base times height. But let's see, one half base, so that's gonna be one half times four m, so that's gonna give us two m. And then the height is, let's see, 2m squared. So in the end, we're gonna have 4m cubed. So we can just go ahead and write 4m cubed right there. But now we can do this calculation fairly easily. So let's see what we have. So we'll have, let's see, it's gonna be one over 2m cubed. So that's the two over 4m cubed. And then we can take the antiderivative here, giving us m squared times b, and then minus b cubed over, let's see, that's gonna be a 12, and then we need to evaluate that from zero to two m. But now, if you run this entire calculation, you'll see that in the end, you'll get two thirds. But that's the probability that our solutions are not real. Of course, the probability our solutions are real will be one minus two thirds or one third. And notice none of these depend on m. So if in the end we take the limit as m goes to infinity, nothing happens. So that means that the probability that we want in the end is just simply one third. And that's a good place to stop.